Alright, so in this video we'll deal with the snapping walls onto walls case. Um, first of all, I just want to put some comments in this blueprint, uh, the position build item, because it does get a bit confusing as to which of these switches does what. So if I put a comment around there, this is the what are we building? And the next set are the what are we trying to snap to. I think I may have referred to these um, the other way around last time, but the way we implemented it, everything worked out, so it's okay. What are we snapping to? Okay, and the one case, uh, well, we've still got two cases to go. The one we'll deal with here is building a wall, snapping to a wall. So, a uh, new function then, snap wall to wall. And like some of the other functions we've done along these lines, it's going to need to receive some input. So it's going to need to know what are you trying to snap to and whereabouts is the cursor in relation to that, uh, the crosshair in relation to that thing. So we'll add a new input. It's going to be of type actor. And that's going to be the uh, the thing that we're snapping to. Uh, wrong way around, sorry. Type is actor. I've given it the name actor rather than snap to there. So called snap to is an actor. Then we want another thing which is the hit location where the crosshair is basically as a vector. So the way this is going to work, similar to what we've done before, we need to get the crosshair location with respect to the origin point of the wall. Now unlike the floor, the wall has the origin point in the middle which makes things a little bit complicated because we'll need to apply an offset to the um, the, the Z coordinate, you'll see in a second. But basically it's going to be um, well one thing at a time, so we'll get that coordinate first. So We'll do a get actor transform on the the thing that we're snapping onto, which we will uh, which will be a wall. We'll do an inverse transform location and plug in the hit location. So that will now give us what we want. Whereabouts is the crosshair pointing at in X, Y, and Z, but measured from the origin of the wall that we're trying to snap to. And then we can start doing things like is x greater than z, in which case, well, if x is higher than z, we're trying to snap to either the left or right. If z is higher, we're trying to snap to either the top or bottom, basically. Well, the crosshair is closer to the top, bottom, left, or right, depending on which of those is true. Now, with the origin point of the wall being in the bottom center, x is fine because we'll have positive x going this way, negative x going this way. Z is kind of a problem. It would be better if we were measuring from the center. So... You'll see in a minute, we'll apply an offset of 200, like halfway up the wall, which is 400 in height, to deal with that. So first of all, let's get a compare float again. And say, is the x, and here if we're measuring from, if the origin point of the wall was in its center, we could just plug z straight into here. But as it's not, we need to apply that offset of 200. So that's just a float minus float with 200. I've uh, missed a step here. It's the absolute value we want of x. There we go. So if it's negative, we, just want, we don't care whether it's positive or negative. We just want to strip off the sign and say which is greater, the absolute value of x or the absolute value of z. Okay. So again, once again, if if the absolute value of x is higher, then the crosshair we've got closer to the left or right edge than the top or bottom. And if z minus 200 is higher, then we're closer to the top or bottom. So we're going to need to create two floats to offset our um, our new piece. So what we're going to do is snap the new piece to be in exactly the same uh, location as the thing we're trying to snap to, and then just offset by however much we need. So we'll need two float variables, x offset, and then just duplicate that to get a z offset. The reason there's no Y offset is because Y offset would be moving this way, like away from the wall towards the camera, or back sort of into the screen, and we, you know, we don't need to do that. So these, if we compile, you can see they both have default values of 0, so we'll leave, we'll leave them both on 0 and just change the one that we want. So if we were closer to the left or right edge with our crosshair, so X was higher, we want to move, we want to offset the new piece in some distance of X. It will be 400 because that's the the width of the wall, and whether it's positive or negative 400 will be the same sign as this x value here. So if we ask for the sign from that float, uh, multiply by 400, so just float minus float, uh, float times float, sorry, put 400 in, and then that will be our x offset. And that's something we want to do if the absolute value of x was greater. Now, if it was the other way around and Z was greater, 
we want to do a very similar thing, except it's this that we want the sign of, and it's the Z offset that we store it in. There, so we do that if Z was greater, i.e. we were closer to the top or bottom and trying to snap to the top or bottom. Now this case, which should very rarely happen, if ever, we'll just wire into Z. This is where if these two values are bang on, which with floats will almost never be the case. Especially as we're reading them from the across here on the screen. So with that done, all we actually need to do now is apply these offsets. So we'll do this in the two steps I mentioned. We'll take the item being built. We'll set its transform. Or set X to transform. And we'll have it in exactly the same place as the thing we're snapping to. And this is something we're going to do you know, no matter what. Whether, we've, whether we're applying a Z offset or an X offset, it doesn't matter. So we want this basically. So we'll put a reroute under there. Another reroute over here. And then just wire that up like that. So now the thing we're building and the thing we're snapping to are bang on each other. Now we apply an offset to the thing that we're building to sort of you know, move it to the left, right, top or bottom of the thing we're snapping to depending on um, what it is that we're trying to which edge we're trying to snap onto. So that is an add actor local offset. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to specify a vector here. We want to give this as three floats, well, two floats. So if we split that struct pin, so I split that vector to get the floats, plug in our X offset, plug in our Z offset, and like I said, there'll never be a Y offset because that would be moving like away from the wall, either forwards or backwards, and we don't want to do that. So that should um, that should work. If we go, let's check that I did wire it in. Yeah, we actually need to wire it in. So snap a wall to wall is this case where you're building a wall and you're snapping to a wall. So that goes there. Then this needs the location of the hit, which is basically the location of the crosshair. And what have we got the crosshair over? Compile, play. So. Let's test this out. So we build a wall, and yeah, as you can see, walls are now trying to snap to the top, left, right, and bottoms of each other. So that shouldn't matter whether we started with a wall or a floor, really. We, sh we should be able to go floor, 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 then maybe switch to walls, snap walls onto the floors like we were doing, but we can now, instead of having to do that, we can snap walls onto each other. Okay, so the last of the four cases we want to deal with in this series is... What if we're trying to snap a floor onto a wall? So we will deal with that one next. The last of our four cases then is what if we're snapping a floor onto a wall? Um, this we'll do in two separate stages and run the uh, run the game in between just because the way that we handle Z is pretty similar to what we've done already, but uh, Y is going to be a little bit different. So to start with, a uh, new function, snap floor to wall. And uh, yeah, you know the routine by now. This needs to know what we want to snap onto as an actor. And what do you know, where are you pointing the crosshair as a vector? So we've been calling that hits. So I'll carry on doing that. Crosshair location would probably be a better name, actually. Now, you notice that like these functions are all starting off with very similar things. So there's a case to be made to say, why not make sub functions that handle this rather than having the same nodes each time? So maybe I'll do a second tidying up video where I I do some of that stuff, like you know package some of this stuff away into their own little sub functions. But we're always starting off by saying this basically: where we're we pointing the crosshair on the model that we are aiming at. Okay, so in this particular instance, it's Z and uh, Y that we're interested in. If let's go back to the wall. So if we've got the crosshair aiming at this wall and we're, and we're placing a floor, depending on whether we've got it over halfway up or less than halfway, the crosshair is over halfway up or less than halfway up the wall. We're either snapping to the bottom of the wall or to the top of it, so as to create like a ceiling. Uh, we'll deal with that first because that's pretty straightforward. Um, all we need to do here, bearing in mind that the wall is 400 high, is say, is the value of Z greater than 200, as in, is Z is is the crosshair more than halfway up the wall, true or false? 
If it is, then we'll change our we'll affect our uh, Z offset. So let's create the offset variables. They will be Z offset and Y offset, which we will come back to. Y offset, just so you know, is because if you think about it, we're placing a floor. It's either going to be on this side of the wall, like here, or on this side of it here. And, and the same for the top. It's either a ceiling going this way or a ceiling going this way. Uh, we'll come back to that. Yes, yeah, so take a branch. If... Oops, missed. So if this was true, we're aiming more than halfway up the wall. Take our Z offset and set it to 400, which we'll put it on top of the wall. It will overlap slightly, but we can tweak that later. If you remember, variables start off with a zero for the offset. So in the event that this was false, we just leave Z offset at zero and don't do anything with it. Uh, here's another little familiar piece of blueprint. We um, we finish up by saying, take the thing that we're building, the thing that we're snapping, set it to transform to be exactly where the thing we're snapping to is. And again, this is another piece of the blueprint that you could easily say, look, this should be in its own sub function. I mean, we do that at the end of every single one of our snapping functions. So later on, I, if I do a well, if I do decide to do a second tidying up video, I'll take all this and put it in its own little sub function. So you don't need to have this at the end of each of your blueprints. Um, item being built, then what is it? We take so the item being built is now snapped exactly to the thing we're snapping to. It's in the same location. Then we add actor local offset. Wire that in. Split that into its component. The the, log, the amount we want to offset, we want as floats, not as a vector. And then we apply our offset. So that's the Z offset. And that's the Y offset. So yeah, we'll write a function which basically takes all this, takes your offsets off you, takes the item being built off you, and, and just deals with it. Save us having this at the end of each blueprint. Okay, so that, I think, should work. Like, we haven't done anything with Y offset at the moment. Like, that's a little bit more complex, so we'll come back to that in a sec. But let's just test this first. So play... Oh wait, have I, again, have I forgot to wire that in? Yep, again. Right, move this out of the way a bit. Snap floor to wall. That's that. We're building a floor, snapping to a wall. Then, as usual, we want these two. That's what we're snapping to. That's where we're aiming. Okay, no, that should do it. So, build a wall. This is the problem. Without working at the Y offset, we're just kind of dead center. So, I mean, it'll work. We can build things like this to put like a little roof on. But that's not quite what we want, is it? So we want to be able to say, snap to this side. And this is where it gets more complicated. What I'm going to say is, if we're standing on this side of the wall, the floor should be like, basically it should be like that. Whereas if we're standing on this side of the wall, it should sort of do this. And the same for the ceiling. It should be on this side or this side, depending on where we're standing. So to do that, we're going to need to measure the angle between where we're standing and some vector on the wall. So like I say, slightly different to what we've done up till now, but uh, we'll do that next. Okay, so for this Y offset then, I think the best thing is going to be to, instead of starting the Y offset with a default value of 0, we'll start it with a default value of 200, right? And then we'll set it to minus 200 if we need it to go the other way. So what this has done by setting Y offset to 200, let me just show you, it means that when we try and build the floor, it will always be on this side of the wall even if we're standing around here, which is not what we want. So what we want to say, as I mentioned just now, move the um, Y offset to minus 200 rather than plus 200 if we're stood on this side of the wall. Okay, so how we'll do that is before we get into this bit, move those out of the way, we'll have another branch. So once we've determined what our Z offset should be, we will um, do we need to change the Y offset to be minus 200, basically, rather than plus 200, or do we just leave it as it, as it is? So set, and this set will be to negative 200. So we'll offset the floor piece on the opposite side of the wall. Now the condition that goes into here, as we mentioned earlier, is which side of the wall? Are we standing on the opposite side of the wall? And that involves a bit of um, angles and vector math. So nothing too complicated, but what we're going to do is take the wall's y-axis, what's called its right vector, 
and ask, is the angle between the player on the wall and this vector more than 90 degrees? If it is, then we need to switch the side that we're, uh, that we're offsetting. Okay, so to do that, let's uh, bring the, the wall that we're snapping to down here and ask for its y-axis. Like I said, that's called the right vector. Uh, get actor right vector, sorry. So get actor. And what we want to know is what's the angle between that and a vector from the player pointing to the wall. So to do that, we want the wall's location. Get actor location. And we want the player's location. So right click, get player pawn, or get player character either should be fine. Get actor location. All right. So to get a vector pointing from the player to the wall, we just do some subtraction. We subtract the wall's position from the player's position, basically. So vector minus vector, subtract the wall position from the player position, and that gives us what we want. Now all we need to do is turn this and this into rotators and ask what the angles are. So the way we turn a vector into a rotator is just do a rotate from x vector on it, which I must have spelt wrong there. Rotate. No? What is it called? Oh, rotation from x vector, sorry. Rotation from x vector. Then down here we do another rotation from x vector. Then what we can do is ask for the difference between these two rotators and, and see what the angles are. So the way we do that is with a delta rotator. So what that will do is, once we split this, that will give you what are the angles in x, y, and z between these vectors, basically. And as I mentioned just now, all we're interested in is the absolute value of what would be the z Okay, so the z is the vertical, right? So all we want to know is, is the absolute value of that angle greater than 90 degrees or not? And put that into there. Okay, let's see what that's doing for us then. So uh, once again, the logic is going to be if we're standing on the opposite side of the wall, this angle would have gone over 90 degrees, in which case it will change y to... It will offset the floor by minus 200 rather than positive 200, which will put it on the, um, the, the correct side of the wall. So let's see. Wall, floor, yep, that's snapping okay. And then we go around here, and yep, that's no snapping there. All right, good. So everything now snaps for everything else, I think. So let's test it out. So we've got floor, snaps onto a floor. We've got a wall, snaps onto a floor. We've got wall, will snap onto wall. And we've got floor, will snap onto wall, either as a ceiling or a floor, depending on where you're standing. And it will work out what side it needs to be on based on where, where you are. Uh, sorry, the whether it's a floor or a ceiling depends on how high up the wall you point and it's um, which way it goes depends on where you're standing. All right, so everything's now snapping to everything else. These four have been sorted out. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there needs to be a tidying up video where we tidy up some of the stuff like uh, wrong one to pick. Like, do we really want things like this at the end of each of the functions instead of wrapping that up into its own little sub function? So we can do that. There's also the issue of picking multiple meshes. Like, what if you want to be able to cycle through uh, not having a, a wall piece that's always like this, but maybe different wall pieces, like one with a window in and one with a door in and stuff like that? In fact, we'll handle that in the next video how we cycle through multiple pieces. Okay, so uh, I'll see you next time.